I recently tried to find out how DDR3 systems are holding up and if they're still viable and found out you can still game somewhat decently with something like an Intel X79 or LGA1150 system. But then after this I thought, what if I want cheaper and older? Well, as it turns out, DDR2 is way more expensive than I thought, so any normal person would just assume it's trash and overpriced and just a big waste of money and give up. But not me. I am, as my parents put it, different. So I bought it anyways. So what did I get? Well, I didn't dive into the cheap server or workstation stuff this time. I instead went out and picked out mostly individual consumer parts to keep the video kind of in check. So I got myself an AMD Finum, 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 2X4840T, Jesus, that's a name, for $18 along with an Intel Core 2Q9550 for $24. And then along with that, I got four two gigabyte sticks of high speed, 800 megahertz RAM. Wow, that's really fast for $30. And I also got an Asus Too Many Numbers It's On Screen AM2 motherboard for $32 and an Asus P5B for the Intel system for $40. Now I've got two consumer board CPUs and RAM, but the prices were kind of high. <laughs> Actually, they're really high. I went ahead and threw together our parts list for an LGA 1150 system, and the estimated cost for all of those parts combined is about $60. And that's with getting a proper i7 instead of a Xeon alternative. And I know building systems like this, picking individual parts is a lot more expensive than getting old pre-builds like Dell Optiplexes, but I really wanted to get the exact parts I wanted and I wanted to put a pretty big GPU in here without any compatibility issues. But for these specific builds, the AMD DDR2 system would cost about $20 more than the DDR3 Intel based system, all else equal. The Intel DDR2 system would cost almost $40 more than the Intel DDR3 system. So what the hell is going on here? There's gotta be more to this than just older, worse parts, more expensive, right? First, I put my motherboard on my test bench, drop in my quad core Phenom and high speed 800 megahertz DDR2 RAM, hook up my Windows USB installer and a blank SSD, install Windows and uh, huh, it doesn't read any drives. Maybe it's set to like RAID or IDE in the BIOS. Oh yeah, my bad, all right. Let's get back into here and I still couldn't install Windows. Odd, okay. Okay, let's just move on to the Intel system. For that, I did the same. Dropped in my chip, hooked up the PSU, RAM, fan, and for this one, it just has the fan spin. No post or anything. That's really weird. The CPU should be supported. It says it is online. So I went through the whole process of reinstalling my RAM, trying different RAM slots, reinstalling the CPU, and nothing really seemed to work. Maybe my BIOS is outdated, but I can't actually get into the BIOS to update it or check if it's uh, old, so one new older CPU later, and I can get into the BIOS and install Windows, but oh my God, this is, this is so slow. There we go. It boots and is all good. Okay. Now I got to figure out what's wrong with the AMD system. This one is weird. If I throw the SSD I used for the Intel system in here, it boots perfectly fine, no issues, but I cannot get Windows to install on a fresh drive at all. I tried troubleshooting it for a while, asking my Discord, changing the BIOS versions, different SSDs, wiping my flash drive and putting the Windows installer back on there, and just nothing would work at all. Big ups to the Discord though for helping me with this, by the way. Please join to help me with more obscure problems. And oh, I launched channel members. So if you wanna join the exclusive Discord members chat and become a member, then I can have you be my personal IT, I mean, we can be best friends and play Fortnite sometimes, every once in a while. Yeah, it's $1.99, no excuses. After a whole afternoon of trying to get this damn thing to work, I just left it for a couple of days. Came back and still nothing. I went ahead and just used the Windows install from the Intel system and called it a day. I really don't know what the problem is or was, but I am not worried about it. It's got Windows on it now, all right? Finally. Finally, I can get into testing these things. The system's also really simple. I use the same DDR2 RAM for each build, threw it on my test bench with a 500 watt PSU. That is a 650 watt for the B-roll, ignore that. And my RX 6600, because this costs almost double the system, it should be fine. My biggest question is, can these even tackle regular Windows nowadays? With eight gigabytes of RAM, well, it's showing seven, but with eight gigabytes of RAM and slow RAM at that, I was really worried this could even handle something like Chrome. But to my surprise, it did handle it pretty well. I could play back YouTube videos at 1080p 
and 4K just fine, and I could even multitask reasonably well. I mean, these are quad core chips. I mean, it's not that bad. They both performed about the same for just regular daily window stuff, which is really nice. The power draw was pretty intense though. The Phenom was almost constantly drawing 80 to 100 watts according to hardware info. Just watching YouTube and doing various regular browsing. Okay, so finally I can get into some gaming. Let's go ahead and start with Bioshock Infinite 1080p Ultra, a game that actually came out after these chips by a wide margin. That's really weird, actually. Starting with the AMD system, in that we got an average of 105 FPS with a 1% low of 12. It had horrible stuttering, and the GPU usage would just randomly plummet with the frame rate. You could probably make this work, but I just wouldn't want to personally. On the Intel side, Bioshock got an average of 85 FPS with a 1% low of 5. It was pretty stuttery and completely froze a few times for a couple of seconds at a time. The average is almost half of what the AMD system got. Don't know why I wrote that. That is nowhere near half. Kind of strange considering how similar these chips are either way though. Then I made the unfortunate mistake of trying out Doom Eternal at 1080p low, didn't want to launch, and said my AMD drivers, which were the latest ones, were out of date. So I got older AMD drivers drivers still wouldn't launch. So I tried validating the game, then reinstalling it. So I googled it and it seems like these CPUs are so old they don't actually have all of the instruction sets required to run the game. So I thought maybe, just maybe, it'd work on the Intel system. But nope, didn't work. So Doomer just gets a DNF. And with those results, my genius thought, what about Red Dead Redemption 2? Got into the menu, set my settings, and crashed. Both systems. You can download a workaround to this. I don't really think I trust it, and I don't really think it's going to work well either way. So, moving on. Minecraft. 12 chunks, render, and simulated. On AMD, we get an average of 48 FPS with a 1% low of 3 FPS. There was just absolutely horrible stuttering when loading new chunks, and some bad stuttering even with the previously loaded chunks being loaded again. With Optifine or the other one people in the comments get too mad about, you could probably get this to the point of being playable, maybe. Still better than when I used to play on my old dual-core AMD laptops. I mean, that has to count for something, right? Either way, similar deal with Intel, but worse. Average of 40 FPS, 1% low of, well, normally I round these up or down depending, but it was only half of an FPS, so that's rough, buddy. Fallout 4 did all right with medium settings. Team Red got an average of 50 FPS with a 1% low of, oh man, 0.3 FPS. And Team The Other Side got an average of 53 with a 1% low of 25 pretty playable, but like a lot of the other games, some decent stuttering going on, and not really that amazing of an experience, especially as you get towards more crowded areas in the city in Fallout 4. I also tested Risk of Rain 2, because it's a newer indie game, and I was curious how a 14-year-old CPU would handle it. The Phenom got an average of 63, with 1% lows of 24.3, and on the Intel side, we got an average of 74, 1% lows of 16. In a big fight, it could be kind of annoying to get a stutter here and there randomly, but it wasn't honestly that often. I ended up playing both games until I died, because I've actually never played this game once, and I wanted to play it. So I also want to test some emulators, so I figured I'd start with the best one in my opinion, Dolphin. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting the games to work really well. Twilight Princess and Wind Waker would just crash, and Mario Sunshine needed some serious setting tweaks to run okay enough on both systems. You pretty much just have to offload as much work as possible onto the GPU rather than the CPU because it's so much more better -er. but Sunshine did work well on both systems and I really didn't feel like testing any other emulators because I figured it really wouldn't work because even though Sunshine mostly ran well it did have some stuttering that was pretty rough and I just not a fan. To be honest for gaming these chips kinda suck. At least for modern games. Lots of indie games like Factorio, don't judge my build, I know it sucks, run really well along with other 2D games. And even lighter 3D games, like, I mean, Risk of Rain 2, Portal 2, lots of 2. Speaking of 2, it's less than $2 to become a channel member. Did I already do this? I don't remember. We got, that's it for plugs. No affiliate plug. None of you will ever buy either one of these systems. But if you do... I don't know if it's because I cut my finger and my typing is slow, but this feels like a lot of testing. I even left a game or two out, but we're finally there. I did Blender BMW, CPU only, on the Phenom, and after a lot of waiting, I actually went and made myself lunch waiting for this. It takes so freaking long. We finally, after that, got a result and it finished in 28 minutes and 38 seconds. That that took so long. And oh God, I have to do this again for Intel. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna get another snack. I'm gonna be fat after this video. <clears throat> the Intel finished in 33 minutes and seven seconds. Quite a bit slower, but this took so long. Just add chips to your sandwich and eat slower if you really wanna go Intel and it'll work out. Oh no, more synthetic tests. Sediment R23 on the AMD system, it got 1571 and Intel 1654, which is, Really odd because the Intel chip in general wasn't performing as well as the AMD chip, but did better in Cinebench. Also, I should say these both stayed pretty cool the entire time. I used a stock cooler for the Intel system and the disaster for the AMD system that consisted of a stock AM3 heatsink and a jet 
for the fan, I just rested on top of it. Worked pretty good, all things considered. Kept it cool. And, oh god, I don't want to do premiere testing. I don't have the patience for this. It's not going to run well. It just, just assume editing video on this is going to suck. I know what you're thinking. Yes, I can read minds. Those are not normal thoughts you have. Seek help, please. But what about the CPUs? What the heck's going on here? Performance is... Honestly, it's awful. And some modern games don't even work. And with DDR3 prices right now, this is just insane. Why would you buy these? Well... I think a big part of it is just simple supply and demand. These chips, motherboards, and RAM are getting older and older, and a lot of them are just dying or being thrown away because they're kind of useless, <laughs> leaving less supply in general. So let's say you have an old DDR2 system that's still chugging along just fine for maybe your server, second PC, or heck, maybe you're even a business and you just don't want to spend the money updating software for modern systems and you have a motherboard die on you, or need some slightly better CPU performance. Well, the only thing you can really do is replace it from the dwindling supply of DDR2 motherboards and CPUs, or completely upgrade. And if you upgrade, you're sure as hell not gonna go to DDR3 to have the same problem in just a few years. You're gonna go for something new, and then you're gonna look at the prices, see so you'd need a new motherboard, CPU, RAM, hell, maybe even a new power supply or case. I mean, that's a lot of work. So. At that point, you might as well just pay $25 for a Q9550 or $30 for some ancient AM2 motherboard. Because why put in all the effort? You'd save a ton of time and money, not to mention opportunity costs. That's a businessy term I heard recently. And if it works, why bother? I think another part of the high prices is just selling stuff online has costs. Storage and labor, shipping, taxes, eBay bending you over for their cut of the pie. You just can't really sell stuff for $1 online like you could in person. You'd be losing money every single time. You need some margin to even justify your time a little bit. So unless you're selling dozens or even hundreds of CPUs, you kind of have a floor where it's just not worth it anymore to sell online for an individual. That's why you'll see cheap Xeons going for $10, even if it has worse or better performance than something else for a similar price. If you sell a hundred, that's a thousand dollars. And even if you're making a couple bucks per chip, that's still $200 to pocket for yourself. But if you just have one CPU, why bother doing all the work for just $2? I mean, yeah, sometimes $2 is $2. For most people, you might as well just keep it around just in case. These are still usable for quite a few things, but just don't go out and buy one unless it's really just for funsies. DDR3 is way better for all of this. It's more compatible and it's just really better for similar or even cheaper pricing. And if you really want to see how much better, go check out my video I did like this, but for DDR3. I personally thought it was really interesting taking a look at these older systems, and I even used the same GPU for testing. So, go do it. Subscribe.